Hi, welcome. This is Julia's Jukebox Junction, where I, Julia, bring on some of my favorite people in my life and ask them to list their top 10 favorite albums of all time. Each week, I have a different guest explain their their life through the albums that influence them the most and how music affects their day to day. I am not a musician or in the industry, just a lover of all things music and interviewing. So put a dime in the jukebox and enjoy this week's episode. I got the idea for this podcast uh, before Christmas break. I had realized that in my personal life that I had been listening to the same music since I was five years old. And I have a very hard time branching out and listening to new things and consuming new artists and genres. So... I decided to start a project in asking my friends to send me uh, songs that they have been currently listening to or songs that they really love, one of their favorites. And I started ranking them on my Instagram. um, And I noticed that a lot of people liked it. I was getting messages from from the friends and like my parents and, and, and other people that that was something cool. And I knew that I always wanted to do a podcast. So I decided that I was just going to make a music podcast because I like talking about music and I like interviewing my friends and really talking to them and understanding them um, and not even just my friends, but like family and really people that inspire me and that have inspired my life and how I carry myself. I want to know the albums that make them dance. I want to know the albums that make them think. I want the albums that make them cry. I want to know how the music has deeply affected their lives. And I think this podcast is going to be really fun to figure out about people that I've maybe known my entire life or that I've just became friends with or teachers or adults figures in my life. Um, I'm really excited to find out those little nooks and crannies of their brain by music. That's why I uh, started asking my friends to send me music to listen to, because even now, like I would say that I've had different music tastes than when I was 14, definitely, but I still listen to the music that I listen to, and I really wanted to change that. So that's why I started asking my friends to send me music. So I'm going to start with my top 10, and I'm also asking my guests to give me some uh, honorable mentions if they have any. I know that I do. I couldn't fit them all on my top 10, so I have a few honorable mentions, but if they don't have any, they don't have to make any. Um, I, it's just I know that it's there's albums that don't quite make it to your top 10, or you have love for them, and they're just not. You know, they're just not there yet, but you have love for them that you want to give a shout out. And I definitely have a few of those. So let's get right into those honorable mentions. The first honorable mention that I will uh, put out there is the 1978 album Van Halen by the group Van Halen. Starting off strong with my first honorable mention. Um, This album was another constant in my youth. My mom is a pretty big Van Halen fan, I would say, at least before Sammy Hagar Van Halen. And I would listen to this album pretty frequently, but it wasn't until I bought a record player and I inherited some of my aunt's, uncle's, mom's vinyls that I really started listening to this record. Um, I think it's just so prevalent that you know, this band could tell that they had something special. And Eddie Van Halen is a guitar master for that reason only. Just listening to the different riffs on each song and just how he really used the full instrument was just a masterpiece. I I didn't have the heart to put it on my favorite albums of all time, but I would be remiss if I didn't at least put it on my honorable mentions. My second honorable mention is the 1977 album, The Stranger, by Billy Joel. It's pretty hard not to like Billy Joel. I mean, everything he does is fantastic. (laughs) Um, But I don't think I ever sat down and listened to an actual Billy Joel album until I got my record player. And I was gifted Stranger by Billy Joel. Um, It's such a good album from start to finish it really captures 
youth in a way that I've never felt before. If you listen to it, you I it, it really solidifies growing up and those feelings you have from when you realize that you're not a child anymore and your life is slowly starting and there's nothing you can do about it and you may not have all the information but you're gonna do it and I'm currently in that mindset myself so to actually sit down and listen to this album when I got it like 18 19 to go wow yeah holy crap that's exactly what I'm feeling right now how did he know it's also just a beautiful album of genre bending and just Billy Joel's voice is just so beautiful. So just it's one of those albums where if you need to clean your room or or you just you're crying in your bathtub because it's been a long week. It's one of those albums that like you can really put on, listen to and thoroughly enjoy. It's not going to make you think or you know it's not going to make you go to other worlds or anything but it's just a beautiful album really and my final honorable mention is the 1979 album Regatta de Blanc by The Police. My parents had a compilation album of The Police. I think it's a V compilation album. <laughs> the black and yellow one if anyone's wondering. Um and my mom listened to that sometimes but I wouldn't credit me loving this album until I started dating my boyfriend, Devin. Devin really likes the police. He's a bass player. So he's a he's a huge fan of bands that have three members and the lead is the bass player. <laughs> so I've listened to a lot of police albums, but this one is just good from the start to the end, in, in all honesty. And I like what they do. They, they start the album with a, a single, and then they brand, like they spread out their singles. Sometimes um, musicians will do that where they put all of their singles back to back when you first start the album. And then like you listen to the rest of it. And I don't think that's very good um, strategy. I think you need to hook your your listeners with with one single and then play some of your other songs and then another single and play like it's not good to just have all the ones that people know at the beginning because you could hear it on the radio all the time and then just skip those three songs or now in days people just listen to singles so they'll go listen to the singles without even listening to the rest of the album and that's not good you want them to listen to your whole album that you spent your hard-earned like blood sweat tears money on and it's not smart to just put them all together. So I like how they spread them out. And there's not, honestly, there's no bad song on the album. My 10th favorite album of all time is the 2015 album Trap Soul by Bryson Tiller. This album came out my freshman year of high school. And I would say that freshman year is pretty hard for a lot of kids because a lot of people lose friends from middle school when they go into high school or they move to a school and and they don't go to the same school as some of their friends and it can be a pretty difficult time I know it was for me um this album is just so good I love Bryson Tiller's vocals he has such a nice flow like his he his singing wise he's fantastic but when he raps, his flow is so perfect on all of the beats of the songs. And it, this used to be an honorable mention. But in the last couple months, I really, when I started listening to all these albums over again, I just realized that this album helped me a lot as a kid. Mind you, this whole album's about like love. But this album, even now, you can listen to it and enjoy it. It's not situational. You know what I mean? You don't have to be heartbroken or in love to listen to this album. You can just listen to Bryce and Tiller and his amazing vocals. My favorite song on the album is Rambo. Um, I would listen to that before I would... I was on the swim team in high school, and I would go, and I would before each race, I would listen to that song. And it really pumps you up 
it really makes you feel like a badass. And uh, I don't, I just really love it just for that alone. But I think the best song on the album, in my opinion, is Let Him Know or the song Don't. They're both masterpieces, in my opinion. My ninth favorite album of all time is the 2019 album Hot Pink by Doja Cat. I'm one of those people who is absolutely, madly, hysterically in love with Doja Cat. I've been in love with her since Moo. And this album changed my life. I just, her flow, her creativity, her personality, everything that she brings to her music is just the best. There's there's not a bad song on the album. She Every song on Hot Pink is completely different from the next. You can have, you have traditional rap, you have hip hop, you have R&B, you have rock and one songs. You've got all these different genres and, and she you can tell she just had fun and she had a lot of creativity on this. Her sophomore album, it's 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 beyond perfect. And Say So is the greatest song of all time. And I know people are sick and tired of hearing it because they played it on the radio all the time, but it is still fantastic. It still holds up. I love, 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 love her. My favorite song on, on Hot Pink is obviously Say So, but I think the Best song on Hot Pink is Streets. The the grip that that song had over TikTok is just insane. My eighth favorite album of all time is the 2013 album AM by the Arctic Monkeys. So as I stated earlier in the podcast, um, I was raised on classic rock and rock from previous eras but i didn't listen to like mm, grunge i didn't listen to like early 2000s rock um i i kind of just stopped listening to music after 1995 until recently (laughs) so when i found the arctic monkeys and i listened to their discography i was pretty surprised that i liked the rock music that they were producing because I thought that, like, new rock and roll wasn't good. And I think a lot of people have that uh, notion. But, you know, the Arctic Monkeys, um, Greta Van Fleet, Monty Skin, like, these bands that are playing rock music are becoming popular again. So I, I don't, I think it really adds to the argument of, rock is dead when it's just evolving all music evolves and um i like this type of of rock especially the arctic monkeys the alternative i i really like how they play their music is fantastic this album defined the 2013 2014 tumblr girl uh it it was really a part of creating that subculture of like alternative edgy culture that was super popular around this time um this era of music because this aesthetic was so popular on tumblr it became popular on instagram and and other social and pinterest and other social media websites so it it boomed and and blossomed very quickly and it went away just as fast but because it was a subculture that popped up really quickly and faded away the artists at that time were able to embrace as much as their creativity as they could um and the the best thing that they did was they um focused on telling a story throughout the albums you know there's there's some albums that have concepts and i don't necessarily think this has a major concept but you don't lose the feeling of the album at all the songs are very cohesive to each other there is no 
right or like wrong direction they go in. They are on a linear scale. And I like that. I like that in an album. An album doesn't need to have different genres on every song for it to be really good. Sometimes it can just give you a vibe. And I think that's what this time frame was about, is a vibe. These songs on this album alone really defined that time period. I mean, do I want to know, Are You Mine, Arabella, um, Why'd You Only Call Me When You're High? These songs defined the Tumblr girls, and all of them are pretty popular still to this day. But my favorite song on the album is Knee Socks. I like the guitar riff. I, lo- I watched them perform it live on YouTube. They did it at some, like, radio show or something. And I just I fell in love with that riff. I just It's such a good song. My seventh favorite album of all time is the 1973 album Goodbye Yellow Brick Road by Sir Elton John. This album is a quintessential album for uh, vinyl collectors. It's one of those albums that I recommend you buy on vinyl because it just sounds the best pressed on the vinyl in my opinion um so many iconic songs that we all associate elton john with today came from this album i mean benny and the jets candle in the wind and saturday night's all right fighting just to name the three um his whole kind of brand and how we look at elton john i would say primarily came from this album. The first song on the album is called Funeral for a Friend, and it is an 11-minute rock opera. It is fantastic. It's it's almost meant to, like, throw you off, like you're expecting, like, a piano ballad from Elton John, and it is just a completely different direction. It is fantastic. It is so good. Um... In my genuine opinion, this album set the tone for rock pop, if you would say. I think Elton John is just one of those artists that really defined a generation. And a gay man to be dominating rock and roll at that time is progressive beyond belief. And I would argue that Bernie Taupin and Elton John is comparable to Paul McCartney and John Lennon as one of the strongest writing duos of of all time. Like I said, the best song on the album is Funeral for a Friend, but my favorite song on the album is the title, uh, Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. I've loved it ever since... I watched him on The Muppets. (laughs) My sixth favorite album of all time goes to the 1967 album Pisces, Aquarius, Capricorn, Jones by the band The Monkees. This album has been on a constant loop in my lifetime. I know that they're a fake band and they just were made for TV, but they came out with real albums and that they actually put their heart and soul into. And my mom was in love with Davy Jones her entire life. So I've been listening to this band that most people really don't know my entire life. I know their entire discography. And it's a shame. It's really a shame that no more people don't know about the monkeys. This album is so good. And I, I really, in all honesty, I'm going to, I'm going to credit Mike Nesmith, rest in peace, to the creation of greatness that is this album. Every song that he wrote, you could tell he brought his own creativity to it. A lot of the songs that he wrote are very Texan. He's he's, he's from Texas, uh, Western, I would say. And just really good guitar skills. He played his own instruments. And I believed Mickey learned. And I think Peter learned. I don't think Davey ever. Uh, Davey played the tambourine. But I don't think he ever learned to play like any of the other instruments. Um, 
his all their voices were really unique and cool. They weren't polished, or at least they didn't present themselves to be. And I, I love love that. <laughs> I love I love all the songs on this album. I actually got to see them in concert before Peter and Mike passed away. So it, this was after Davy had passed away, but before Peter Tork and Mike Nesmith had passed away, and. I was the youngest person in the building, but it was so awesome to see them in concert. They sounded really good. Um, this album, I can listen to from the first song to the last song. There isn't a there isn't a single skip for me personally. I know that this is gonna be on my mom's favorite as well favorite list. Because we listen to it all the time together. It's also a it's also a a road trip album. It's one of these are one of the albums that we take on road trips. We listen to uh, along with some other ones of my list that we haven't heard yet. But this the last thing I'll say about this album is that when the Beatles started. Um, their first cup first albums they were garnered towards teenage girls and I think they kind of moved away from that as they went on as music um I think they obviously they're the Beatles they they the great one of the greatest bands of all time but the monkeys I can almost imagine <sighs> like an everyday girl in the 1960s listening to the monkeys more than the Beatles because the monkeys became popular in like the late 60s somehow I can maybe it's just because I know my mom really liked them when she was a kid but I just imagine like a normal uh, teenage girl in the middle of nowhere is listening to the monkeys because they had a little bit more of an American sound due to Mike Nesmith. Um, and they were on television. That's another thing, is that they had a TV show. You could see them every week. It was pretty hard choosing my favorite song from this album, because the more that I listen to it, the more that I realize I don't have a specific favorite. But I remember when I was younger, my favorite song on the album was uh, She Hangs Out which is the second song on the album. But the best song is the two songs. It's Peter Percival Patterson's Pet Pig Porky, and then that leads into Pleasant Valley Sunday. I think that those two songs perfectly encapsulate why the monkeys are so great. It's because they had fun. They didn't take themselves too seriously. And then they just kick ass with a really good song after the funny joke one. My fifth favorite album of all time is the 1978 album Heaven Tonight by the band Cheap Trick. This album has has been another constant in my life. Um, this is my mom's favorite band. She's seen them in concert more times than I can imagine. She even took me to a concert of theirs when I was like, I think it was six, seven, maybe. Um, I credit this album for the type of music that I like to this day. Um, Rick Nielsen does not get enough credit as a great guitar player. Enough. He doesn't get enough credit, in my opinion. The, the way that he plays the guitar almost like dirty, like slushy, like it just sounds... Uh, grungy is not the word dirty dirty is the best word that i can explain it he really set the bar high for me as a child on what type of music that i like to listen to and how i take my rock and roll like i if it doesn't sound as cool as how rick nielsen sounds i don't want to listen to it it's as simple as that um and then you pair his guitar with robin zander's a very high, interesting voice. Um, it, it's a, it's one of the great recipes for a band that I that I've seen. 
My fourth favorite album of all time is the 1977 album Rumors by Fleetwood Mac. My parents actually didn't listen to Fleetwood Mac when I was younger. It was never a CD that we had in the house. It wasn't until my boyfriend Devin, that was the first record that I ever had, is that he bought me Rumors. And it's one of those records that you can just put on and have it as in the background. And it's very soothing. I don't know if that's the right word for it, but I... I just love the the music, the the actual drums and guitar and the piano. Everything in the on this album is just instrumentally is beautiful. And I know that it's very famous as the the cheating album, <laughs> the divorce album, and you can almost hear the, either each individual heartbreak in each song. And you know, Buckingham and and um mix were really going at it <laughs> in this album and you can tell that Lindsay Buckingham was angry and spiteful about this breakup with his songs and with Stevie's songs you can just tell that she's like we're gonna heal from this I hope you heal I hope you have a better life like let's just go with the wind let's just be peaceful and I I like hearing that turmoil from different songs. I think it adds a lot of character to the album. I think my favorite songs on the album, to be honest with you, are Stevie Nicks and Christine McVie's songs. Um, I really like Gold Dust Woman and Dreams and Oh Daddy and You Make Love and Fun. I think those really speak to my soul the most of course all the other songs on the album are great chains is one of the greatest songs of all time but something about finishing the album on gold dust woman it's almost like i i said that she, that she wasn't spiteful that stevie wasn't spiteful to Lindsay, but it almost is like her last words to say to him like after gold dust woman she never has to speak to him again it's almost it's almost like a goodbye but it's not it's not a pleasant goodbye like how are her other songs i don't know i really love that song that's probably my favorite song on the album um but the best song on the album is the chain it's one of the greatest bass lines in rock history one of the most recognizable bass lines just an amazing song with amazing drumming too it's just crazy my third favorite album of all time is the 2017 album harry styles by harry styles for people in my personal life uh they know that i had to put this album on here i've been a fan of one direction since 2011 i've seen them in concert i was devastated when they broke up and when harry harry was always my favorite from the from the moment that I saw him and um I was really excited when he was like I'm gonna put out solo music because it, all the other boys Zayn obviously did and I think Niall did not I don't remember who put it out before Harry but like I was so excited for this album and he did not disappoint everything on this album is perfect oh my gosh I just love the the everything i love the rock songs i love like kiwi and 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 woman i love um meet me in the hallway i like on this album he did what the police did which is he spread out his singles on fine line he did not all of his singles were bunched up together and that really made it hard to listen to the rest of the album in my opinion but this his first album was so perfect and and he really he really created a nice flow to the album where it was like sad song here upbeat song here a really nice folk song here another sad he really just he put his whole soul into this album and it was absolutely perfect i listened to it every day basically a song each day i I love this album. There is nothing wrong with it.
no bumps, no nothing. It's pure perfect. My rigid parents, who only listened to music before 1993, love this album. And that says a lot. I would also say Harry might have had more freedom with his first album than he did the second because more was expected of him for his sophomore album so he really wanted it to be like crystal perfect but I just think that the first album is you can tell it was it was him letting his creativity fly after being in a band where everything you do was controlled from the moment you woke up to the moment you went to sleep so I just I I I think that's why I you can tell on that album I think that's why I like it the most um I my favorite song on the album is Woman, hands down. The rest of the album is perfect, like I said, but Woman is my favorite. The the duck noises, I just I love the song. I love how it sounds. It's just it's interesting. It's not like the rest of the album in my opinion. But the best song A lot of people are going to argue with me on this, but I think Sweet Creature is the best song on that album. And his mom when he played Sweet Creature, she cried and that's his favorite. So Mama Styles is correct. It is the best song on the album. My second favorite album of all time is the 2008 album A Little Bit Longer by the Jonas Brothers. This album is completely run by nostalgia. Uh, the Jonas Brothers were my favorite band when I was a kid. And you know what? They're still up there. I saw them in concert in 2008. I saw them in concert in 2019 when they got back together. This album has been a, one another constant in my life. It's also another road trip song album, and I love this album. My mom loves this album. My dad loves this album. It's one of those things where you can just listen to it because it was such a quintessential part of your childhood. And to be honest with you, everyone always talks about how like the Jonas Brothers, Hanson, One Direction. If it's a boy band, it's it's they limit it to only girl music and it's not good music if it, teenage girls listen to it but that's such bullshit if drake said it himself that women run the music industry because wherever women go men will follow so like girls and women whatever we listen to is what dominates and it's true like the jonas brothers are so popular because well they are great music, but, like, it's not because they, they cater to girls, so it's not a good enough album. This album, even though, that you know, it's like a Disney and they were part of that, this album is still fantastic. They still wrote the songs and played the instruments on the album. And my favorite number one album of all time is A Tie. I know it's a bit hypocritical, but this is my show. I do what I want. I don't care. Anybody who knows me knows that I am a huge Beatles fan. Being a, a child of parents from the 60s, um, I've listened to every Beatles album there ever is. My Both of my parents are huge Beatles fans. But the reason that I chose a tie is for that reason alone, is that both of my parents listen to the spectrum of Beatles music. My mom loves the earlier stuff. So like, please, please me, uh, a hard day's night and help. While my dad is more revolver, rubber soul and Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. So that's what I picked. My two all time Number one favorite albums are A Hard Day's Night and um, Rubber Soul by The Beatles. If I was really going to pick one, if I only had to pick one, it would probably be A Hard Day's Night. Um, because I spent a lot of time with my mother when I was younger. I still do to this day. It's one of her favorite albums, and it's a road trip album. Once again, I can listen to every song on that album. But I understand that people are like, oh, it's doo Oh, it's pop. It's uh, it's it's early 60s music. But, but I like that. I like early 60s music. I actually listen to 50s music. I like 
doo-wop. I like rock and roll. I like that stuff. So A Hard Day's Night really speaks to me. Not only to mention that I love that movie. That's one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time. That being said, I had to put Rubber Soul on this album because of my dad. My dad really... I would explain my father as a shower man. Whenever my dad takes a shower, he has he has an old boombox that he has to put CDs in to listen to. And he's got a rotation. I can't necessarily tell you the albums on his rotation because he's going to be a guest on the podcast. But uh, Revolver and Rubber Soul are one of the CDs that he would have on rotation I just remember my entire life listening to those two. And then I had to choose between Revolver and Rubber Soul because he changed, he, um, he went between those two pretty frequently. So I had to look at the track list and see which ones really affected me. And I think I chose Rubber Soul primarily because of the song Michelle. My dad and I are romantics. We like love songs, and I think both my dad and I agree that Michelle is one of the prettiest love songs I've ever heard. Obviously, it's got other songs like Norwegian Wood and In My Life, but, you know, it's a beautiful song, and it, and it, I remember when I was younger, it made me stop and listen to it and kind of just took my breath away of I'm in love with you and you don't understand what I'm saying, but I'm going to make sure that you know how much I love you. And I just, there's something so sweet and romantic about that, you know? So that is my favorite albums of all time. Thank you so much for listening to my introduction episode. Next week will be my first official episode with my first guest, my boyfriend, Devin. Follow us on Instagram at Julia's Jukebox Junction for updates on all new episodes. Thank you so much for listening and rock on.